All right. Now, let's talk about backup security. You got your strategy. You got your plan. You're getting things done. But now we got to look at your backup security. All right. I wasn't sure where to place this, but um, uh, because there's some things that you want to do to protect your data that you want to do while you're configuring your software and setting up your backup job. All right, so just keep that in mind. All right, so now, remember that your backups contain company data, some of which can be sensitive. Therefore, you wanna make sure that your backup, which are gonna be kept in files or in a cloud somewhere, are secure. All right, backup security has to be a priority. Now, ways that you can protect your backups. How can you protect your backups? All right. Well, you can protect your backups by encrypting them. Let's just go down the list first and then we'll discuss them. We can go down, we can um, encrypt the backups. We can configure access controls on the backup storage locations, for example, your NAS. And what that means is in order to connect to the NAS, the network attached storage, or in order to connect to the storage that holds your backup, you need a username and password. All right. You have to have access controls or certain users on a network have access to it and others don't. Or other users may have read access, but they can't change anything. All right. So that's 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 access controls. Uh, you can disconnect the backup storage unit when not using. For example, if you have a, a hard drive, a USB hard drive, you want to create a, a backup, then you can uh, create the backup, you know, uh, and disconnect it during the day, you know, it, depending on your backup needs. Typically, backups would be run overnight, you know, when you're not using the computer, but in some cases that might not be the case, may not be possible, whatever the case may be, and you may need to run the backups during the day or at a specific time when you are in the office or using the computer, and then afterwards you would disconnect the device. All right, that's typically if you're using a USB hard drive or, or, or like that, okay? Or maybe even a network share, you can control when, what times it can be accessed and otherwise it'll be disconnected. Because why you do that is because if a computer gets infected with a virus or ransomware, then it may find those other locations. If your USB hard drive is connected to your computer, with your backups on it and ransomware, let's say, gets on your computer, then it may find that USB hard drive with your backups and start messing up your backup files and ruin your backup files. All right. So that's why you, you would disconnect it. And that would, you know, you can't you can't do anything if it's disconnected. Lim limit physical access to backup media. I don't know if you have an office or room or something where you can put the media you would uh, limit access physical. You physically can't get in there. And also you want to evaluate the security policies of the backup solution provider that you're using. You know, you're putting your data in the cloud. Well, how secure are they? You know, what security measures do they have? So you read their documentation, you can check them out and just to see. And that helps you to protect your data, right? your backups. Now, we talked about access control, and that's one of the benefits of using a NAS unit uh, because it will typically have access control capabilities. In other words, you can create uh, shares on your um, NAS unit and you can control users. You can assign user accounts that can you know, have full control. Some can have read access, so forth and so on. And <clears throat> you don't have to worry about uh, if someone's computer gets infected with a virus, it may find the files, but it won't be able to do anything to them because your account will not have the appropriate permissions to do harm. For example, you could just configure the backup location to have read permissions for normal users and write permissions only for an account that your backup software will use. All right, and that gets into configuration and user accounts and stuff like that, which is beyond the uh, scope of this uh, video, this course. But just so that you know, with the NAS unit, you can assign users and permissions and things like that so that even though it's always accessible on your network, 
because your backup software is going to have to use it. It can't be tampered with because you've restricted access to it, um, you know, virtually. And you can also just have nobody has access to the, <laughs> the backups. And actually, no one really in an office, no one really needs to have access to the backups except your backup software and your uh, backup administrators, your, your, you know, your backup team, <laughs> if you will. All right. So no one else needs to even see the uh, location of your backups on the network. And that's the power of the NAS. You can actually uh, control that. You can, um, you know, set those permissions accordingly. Now, um, like I said, only designated people can, uh, should actually uh, have access to the NAS and you're going to uh, set your software to use an account that has the proper permissions. And there are different types of NAS units. There are different configurations and so forth and so on. And um, you would just do what you have to do to set up the permissions to uh, meet the needs of your backups and, of course, keep your backups secure. Now, I mentioned this before. Using a USB hard drive is great. You can put your backups on that. However, it's vulnerable to malware because if malware gets on your computer, that program, that virus, that, that, that malware can um, spot your backups connected using the USB hard drive and start whacking that. All right, so that's the, the dangers in using a, a USB hard drive unless you disconnect it when not in use, all right, which is, is kind of difficult because, you know, when, you're use, when your computer is doing a backup, it, it, it's going to use resources on your computer and you may or may not notice a performance slowdown uh, while the uh, backup software is performing the backups. I mean, if you got a really powerful machine, fast processor, really fast disk, lots of memory, then you may not notice it too much, except for you may you may hear it, <laughs> your disk, <like> a bing, <laughs> whatever. But um, that's the, the 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 downside of using a USB hard drive for your backups is because it is susceptible. It is vulnerable to malware in the same way that any other file on your computer is susceptible to malware. And that's why you want to have a cloud storage because you can't get to the cloud. You want to do all you can to protect your data. I recommend using a USB hard drive if you are going to use it to create a disk image. Or maybe if you want to do a quick copies of like very critical files and then disconnect it or something like that. But to leave it connected to handle your backups is just putting that backup at risk. Encrypting your backups. Now, we talked about, you know, one way to protect your backups is through uh, encrypting them. And encrypting them, let's just say you're scrambling. <laughs> you're scrambling the file. You're scrambling the contents uh, so that they become quote, unreadable, and you're using what's called a backup key, I mean, a backup key, an encryption key, think of it as a password, a very, 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 very strong password that you would need to unencrypt the backup. So if you encrypt the backup, let's say you, you created a backup and you put it on your USB hard drive, <laughs> all right? and you encrypted the backup, great. You disconnected it from your computer. So your backup cannot be affected by malware. But let's say come, someone comes in and steals your hard drive, steals that USB hard drive, right? And they take it to their computer and they say, oh, I know what this is. And they try to read your uh, backup. And if it's encrypted, they will not be able to. They will need the encryption key or the password, which your password should be strong, not something like password one, two, three, it should be strong, and it's very, very important that you must never forget that password if you intend on using those backups in the future. If you if you encrypt your backups, you must not you can never forget that password, or your backups will be useless. Without that password or encryption key, you will not be able to restore from that backup. Right? That's that's really, really important. We, we've got it. We've um, so securing your backups, some basic things you can do to secure your backups to protect them. Now, 
Next, we're going to get into monitoring and testing your backups. Monitoring and testing your backups. So stay tuned.